Good evening and welcome to The Common Room. I'm John and here are our main headlines. We catch up with our 2016 synchronised swimming hopeful, Emma Holloway, the campaign for local legend Tony Kane to carry the Olympic torch, exam errors and their impacts on students, the planking craze sweeps Chippenham, and finally, the last Harry Potter film smashes box office records. In the run-up to the London 2012 Olympics, we've been keeping a close eye on the up-and-coming Team GB members around the area. Natalie. Thanks John, I'm here with Emma Holloway, a Team GB member who lives in, and trains here in Chippenham. Hello Emma, congratulations on being named as part of the Junior Synchronised Swimming Team GB this Thank year, you. that's obviously a great achievement for you. What has Junior Team GB got lined up for this year? Um, well we've recently just got back from competing at the Junior Europeans in Belgrade um, Serbia. So um, for the rest of the year we haven't actually got any more training, we've just been given the opportunity to trial for seniors which is in September. So that's going to give us more experience of swimming at a higher level. Okay, how much do you have to train to be as successful as you are? Um, I train every day except Saturday, I get a Saturday off. Um, I train up to three times a day, especially on a Sunday where I train all day. And it involves getting up at stupid hours in the morning such as quarter to five on a Monday morning. So what sort of training does that involve? Um, we have the speed swimming training, obviously the synchronised swimming aspect of it, both routine swimming and figure training. Um, we also do a lot of dance and gymnastics kind of base work as well as working out in the gym. Okay, so what's your favourite part of competing? Um, the best bit has to be swimming to my best. If I look back at a performance afterwards and think I couldn't have done any better, then that's all you can ask for. That's great. Obviously we know you're quite heavily involved with Olympic 2012 hopefuls. How are they dealing with the pressure? Um, there's obviously a lot of pressure for them, uh, especially we've got the trials where they will be taking five extra athletes to make it up to 16. Um, but then in March before the Olympics, it, um, it's going to be cut down to nine swimmers. So even for two of them currently training at the moment, they won't be going to the Olympics. So the pressure of that, obviously, to sec secure their own places. Yeah. Will you be in London watching Team GB or are you going to be watching from the comfort of your own sofa? Um, no, I've been lucky enough to get tickets to be able to see the duet finals and the team final. Cool. Do you have high hopes of British success next year? Yeah, definitely. They're at the World Championships at the moment and the results are amazing. They've been moving up every year, so hopefully there'll be another step up at the 2012 Olympics. Thank you, Emma. We wish you the best of luck in the future. Thank you. From hopeful Olympic athletes to hopeful Olympic torchbearers, Tony Kane is something of a local hero. The former army private who was tragically hit by a lorry in 1991 is a familiar face in Chippenham, often seen running around at all times of day and night. However, what he is most respected for is his contributions to charity through marathons including those in London and New York. The 56-year-old has inspired an online campaign to make him the torchbearer for Chippenham. The campaign has over 4,000 members, some even calling for his knighthood. We went, on, uh, we went out on the streets of Chippenham to find out what local residents think of this amazing man and we also met up with Tony himself. Have you heard about local legend Tony the Runner Man? Uh, yes, I have. Uh, are you supporting the bid for Tony the Runner Man to carry the Olympic torch? Yeah, I suppose I am, yeah. Um, have you liked the Facebook petition? Yes, Excellent. definitely, yeah, yes. Yeah. Have you heard about local legend Tony the Runner Man? Yeah, I do, I know who he is, yeah. Uh, are you supporting the bid for Tony the Runner Man to carry the Olympic torch? I don't really know how to support it, but I'll give it a go if I can. Um, does he inspire you as a runner or as a life figure? He does a lot of charity work, I, that's, that's good. Um, he does a lot of running around for Chippenham and he gets himself known. He's like a local celebrity in yeah, certain ways. Definitely. So have you heard about local legend Tony the Runner Man? Yes, I have. Um, are you supporting his bid for Tony to carry the Olympic torch? I wasn't aware that he was in the running, but I certainly would support him, yes. Do you find his running inspirational, and how do you find it inspirational, if you do? Well, it's just like he can run for ages, can't he? He yeah, just runs for what he believes in, yeah. yeah. So um, how many years have you been running, and how many marathons have you taken part in? Many, and 35 years. Really, that's, that's a long time. Including cross country. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about the bid for you to carry the Olympic torch? Brilliant. Yeah. Thanks to Chippenham ladies. Definitely. Yes. You. Um, are you planning to do any marathons in the near future? New York this year. Oh, excellent. To excellent. win. Definitely. 
You can vote for Tony by going to Facebook and liking the page, petition to get Tony the runner man to carry the Olympic torch. Now for the rest of the evening news. When it comes to exams, it's the students you'd expect to be nervous about making mistakes, not the exam board. With results only a month away, England's exams watchdog is still investigating mistakes made in a total of four A-level and two GCSE exams. An OCR spokesman said, We deeply regret these errors. We're extremely angry because this is not fair on students, parents and teachers. He added, It's not acceptable and if we find that someone has not done their job, they will lose their job. At least when students make errors, they get off more lightly. Thanks, John, and good luck if you're expecting any results soon. We are now joining Corey for a special report on a craze that's sweeping Chippenham. Planking is known as many names. The laying down game, on one's belly, playing dead, and many, many more. Planking was first invented back in 1997 by Gary Clarkson and Christian Langdon and became more popular in the North East England. However, comedian Tom Green claims to have invented planking as early as 1994. Eventually, it started to spread across the world. As it became more noticed, pictures were taken by friends or families of the plank E and posted on social networking sites and other image viewing websites for other plankers around the world to see. Those at plank would compete to get the best image of themselves planking in the strangest of places, such as on top of street lights, tall buildings, post boxes, famous landmarks and building ledges. However, there was a case in Brisbane, Australia after 20-year-old Acton Beale decided to plank on a seventh floor balcony and plunged to his death. This is known as the first and only casualty in the planking craze. Had you heard of planking, Natalie? I had actually, John. Have you heard of pastafarianism? Well, yes, actually, I have. Did you know an Austrian man has won the right to wear a colander as religious headgear on his driving licence? After claiming that the headgear was required for his religion, pastafarianism, Mr. Nico Alm was re required to provide a doctor's certificate to prove that he was psychologically fit to drive. According to its website, pastafarianism's only dogma is a rejection of dogma. In addition, pastafarianism seeks to scrutinise ideas and actions but ignore general labels as its ideal. On top of that, the religion can be fundly, fundamentally understood using these principles. A belief in pirates as the original Pastafarians, a fondness of beer, the understanding that Friday is a religious holiday, and to embrace contradictions. Now on to our Taglia television and film news. The final Harry Potter film has smashed box office records by taking £26 million in its first weekend in the UK. Although the first part of Deathly Hallows set five records last year, the second part has broken four of them. Not only have, sac have rec records been broken in this country, but also overseas in the US, where more than $90 million, or £56 million, has been taken in on just the first day of release, and the fact that most cinemas are showing the film in 3D has only increased the price. Previous records were held by the Twilight Saga, New Moon, which made $72.7 million. Movie buffs believe that this could be the first film ever to make over $1 billion at the US box office. A staggering idea supported by Dan Fellman, head of domestic distribution at Warner Bros, who said a billion dollars is definitely going to happen. How do you feel about the ending of this magical film series, Harry Potter? The ending of Harry Potter, um, it's really sad for me um, because I read all the books and I sort of grew up with the characters, so the ending, it's like, oh my god, that's the end, it's, it's big, and it is sad. But I think the stories will like live with everyone, forever, definitely. The ending was really good, because it summed up the whole book, and it was my favourite film so far, and I think it was brilliant. I liked it, because I think it, I liked the sum up right at the end, I thought it was quite nice that it was like a firm ending. Do you think the stars are good role models? I think they are good role models because they've tried so hard for such a long time and they've accomplished so much. Do you think the stars have kept in touch with reality? Um, as much as they can, because obviously it's like a magical kind of world. So yeah, I think they have, especially like the storylines of them as people to teenagers. Yeah, I think they have. They've been really good role models for all age groups and I think younger ones look up to them and they've been such great actors through the whole films. Why do you think the film series has been so popular? I think it's been so popular because the books have been really popular and it's had a good image and they've advertised it really well and all the actors are brilliant. I don't know. I, th I think it's just 
interests in. Like, it's not a boring film, but you never get bored at some moments where you do with other films. And it's like, I don't know, it's just everyone's pretty much interested and wants to be like a wizard and stuff, let's be honest. And finally, who are your favourite characters? Snape, all the way. Um, Luna's very odd, she's funny. Um, probably um, Bellatrix is strange as well. Yeah, she's... I quite like Lucius Malfoy. <laughs> My favourite character is Ron Weasley. <laughs> he's so funny and I think he's very pretty. <laughs> uh, yeah, I just like everything, he's jokes. He's so, so funny. <laughs> My favourite character has to be Harry Potter. Um, Ron. Thank you very much. This really is a fantastic end to a cultural phenomenon that has hit the world and will be sorely missed by many. Well, that's all from us tonight on The Common Room. We'll be back tomorrow with more top headlines. Goodbye. Goodbye.